in the Philadelphia community where you uh, you create a bond as a young brother growing up and when you're on a certain path of truth, the bond is set as family. So we did things as a family. And yes, there were rules, there were, there were regulations, there was a strict uh, guide, there were strict guidelines in which was necessary to raise a certain mentality here in the West and it was embedded in us at an early age. And if some some of those young brothers, sisters, they fell away. Some of us kept the the laws and the and the uh, codes and the things that were established to keep us in line. Those that knew better. Others people rebel. Most teenagers do at a certain time in their life in most households. Most Catholic churches, regular church, Muslims, Jews, doesn't matter, it's a, it's a mentality that, you know, they have their own mind, they have all the answers. All of, most adults know what happens at that time, because most of us went through it. Um, growing up in the community, dealing with uh, several brothers, you meet different individuals, you grow up with different individuals, you know them on a personal level. Um, several brothers I became very close with. Um, by you, or Christopher Cornelius, who was a, is a dear friend of mine, was a dear friend of mine, and growing up back and forth in New York and Philadelphia, you meet people from various communities. We have various communities all over the world, for those that know about our communal living that was set up and established in different cities across the nation. Um, we grew up together. Through him, I met Jacob York, Yaku Muhammad, who he is known as, that's his birth name, not York. He adopted the name York for influence in the music industry. The name York was Dr. Malachi's York's name, not his. He wasn't born with that name. But that's further down the line. We met in um, late 80s, early 90s. And uh, personally, we didn't click. I didn't like him. You know, very egotistical. Most people that know him, they may feel the same way. I don't know. From a personal experience, it was not, you know, it was it wasn't that type of relationship initially. Me and Ayu, a brother or a son, a son of Dr. Malachi's yoke, we were very close. <clears throat> we did things together. We hung out. We were about the same, we're about the same age. Uh, we traveled together. Basically, grew up together as brothers. What we did, what brothers do in a community, in the community, for those that just a basic family living, family environment where we uh, did things as a as a group. Boys did the things together, the sisters did things together, and uh, we grew up that way. Um, in, the, in the 90s, Kenneth Chris or Ayu, we, uh, I'm going to be very personal in my experiences so people can get a clear picture on my involvement in reference to the federal government being incarcerated myself and them have, knowing me personally because of my involvement and in being incarcerated for several years uh, from 1998 until the year 2000. After uh, my incarceration is when the unfolding of the conspiracy took place. Prior to that, it was just known that Jacob York was a disgruntled hater of his father. For his own previous re own reasons um, leading up to that, through his personal life or personal experience with Dr. Malachi York, he had his own reasons, own vendettas, own jealousies, own envies that conjured up and grew in his heart and chest. And most people that knew him knew that he would express that in ways that would baffle the most average person because we were looking at that's your father. How could you say certain things or how could you feel a certain way? Us loving him, Dr. Malachi York as we did, it was puzzling, but to each, each his own. People have their own feelings. So um, in 90, 98, I got incarcerated. I did federal time. I was released in 2000, 2000 of April. I was released for five years from 2000 to 2005. For my incarceration, uh, Ayu was also incarcerated with me because we were co-defendants. And our growing up in our early 20s, we did time together because of some things we were involved with. We 
did our time. As they say, serve time for the society, for the crimes we've done, fine. Mistakes, things happen. As a young man, black man growing up in this country, it happens. Incarcerated, did our time, came home um, around 2000 in, uh, say, July. I was working in um, a barbershop in Atlanta. <clears throat> that's, my, that's what my release city was. Though I always, I always stayed loyal to the do doctrine, always taught the doctrine, always stayed loyal to Dr. Malachi Dior, wrote him several times in prison, incarcerated. I did receive letters back. There was, there was no, um, no hate or anything in my heart in reference to my father who raised me since I was 12 years old, moving in the community on my own. I was not brought in by a family. I was adopted by a family. I was converted at an early age and moved in on my own conviction. And I traveled the path and knew who Dr. Malakazi is, was, and will always be. So there's no issue with Dr. Malakazi York and myself. When I, my my um, release in July or in April, I was working in the barbershop on supervised release with the devil's all in your business, making sure you don't do the things that you were found guilty of. <clears throat> And I had to deal with it. Um, Ayub was released later that year. Him and Jacob were in contact. Me and Jacob had several incidents, run-ins earlier, 97, 96, around that time, where, you know, it wasn't personal. It was more so business. Even though I didn't like them, certain business adventures we did indulge in. And through... Ayub, who was my partner, that's, you know, we, people that know us know that we were rolling together for several, several years. But getting to the point, um, Jacob York came to the shop with Ayub. I didn't stay in contact with Jake because I didn't like him. It was, it was not necessarily bump heads constantly because of his feelings toward Dr. Malachi Z. York. I was, I would always defend the master teacher and, and to this day, that's what I'm doing up here. And we would clash. Of course, Ayub was his brother. They would talk. But we would clash. Business, maybe, but not necessarily because of our dislike towards each other. Okay, July, came to the barbershop. It was a discussion. I think 2000, um, no, actually it was 2000. What was the question? 2001, okay. This was in the next year, 2001, excuse me. I was still in supervisors when I was working in the barbershop. They came then. I you was out. And... The feel was this, I, um, the conspiracy was already taking place in 2001. The trip was in 2001, correct? Okay, after the trip is when he came to the barbershop and we had a conversation, he came to get his hair cut, I, you were there. And the, he was trying to feel me out because I know his mentality, I know how he thinks. He's trying to feel how I feel towards Pop. And I got, I had Pop pictures all around. I have the books there. So there's a distance there be, in his mind because of the fact of my loyalty to the master teacher and things that was necessary or that he wanted done because certain things that I was known to do that I could get done, he wanted done and the approach was there by him coming to the shop and feeling the situation out. It didn't go far. Months later at a Thanksgiving dinner, um, me and my mate at the time, Ayu and Jake, he brought Jake to the house. This is when I learned about the South Beach trip, not about the conspiracy. I didn't know about the conspiracy in the end of 2001 in, in uh, November. And I didn't know about it. I just knew, heard about the trip. I heard what was going on in the trip. Who was there? Pictures. It, you know, it was a conversation that, that came up. And 